Well, if that seller says we have to close end of February and it's the end of January, but you absolutely love the home and you agree to that, you end up carrying a bridge loan and you end up carrying both homes for a period of time if your financial institution allows it. I mean, it depends on your circumstance and what your timeline is, but if you're not pressured for time, buying first allows you to find a home that is at least suitable for your needs and wants. Buying first allows you to, in that process, prepare your home for sale and make sure that it's ready to go. A few of the cons of buying first is, one, you've got the the pressure then that you have to sell. I think that's probably a better approach to the question is what, what risks do you run depending on the option you choose? Well, otherwise, there aren't a whole lot of negatives of buying first other than the fact that now you have to sell and you probably need a certain amount of money for that home to sell for. And then lining up closing dates can be an issue if you're buying first. So as an example, if that seller says, we have to close end of February and it's the end of January, but you absolutely love the home and you, you want to buy that home and you agree to that, well, now you're closing in 30 days. Your home's not going to be on the market for seven or 10 days. So you're closing in three weeks from when your home goes on the market. The chances of getting a closing date to line up with that are going to be slim. So you end up carrying a bridge loan and you end up carrying both homes for a period of time if your financial institution allows it. Right. Which usually they do, but not they'll, they're always going to have limitations on how long you can do it for. And then obviously taking into consideration the cost of it. Correct. And then the other side of it is if you buy a home with a longer closing, so end of January, you go out, you see a home you love, you buy it. And the seller says, we need a June closing. And you say, okay, no problem. You get your home on the market and you get multiple offers. And the best offer is closing in April, you've got a two month gap now that you are without a home. And maybe the best offer, you know, is suitable, like it's compensating you in order to find some kind of accommodation for that two months, but you got to move twice, you got to find that accommodation or move in with friends or family or, you know, find a short term rental. And that can be confusing. 